Hey, what is up guys? This is Petronius Pixel, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a complicated hue forge that was requested by a Patreon. Now he was having a lot of trouble with this picture right here, which I actually already started. I forgot to hit record, so I don't have to do this again. But I can see why he's having trouble, because the greens and the skin tones might be merging, because remember, yellow is kind of shared in hue forge between red and green. And you just have kind of like a lot more going on, especially with this complicated backdrop, but all these colors. So that can be really tough. Now I've already started segmenting out the skin tone. So spoiler alert, that's how we're accomplishing this is we're actually going to be separating the elements, just like in my tutorial, into the bucket. So the hat, the eyes, and the clothes are gonna be in the red channel. The skin's gonna be in the green channel and the background is gonna be put into the blue channel. And in order to do that, we actually have to accomplish that in Photoshop, which is what I was doing here when I noticed that I wasn't recording anymore. Um, and I'm just kind of segmenting out the skin. And so the smoother job you do, the better it's gonna look. So we're just gonna segment this skin out really nicely and we'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> That's good enough, we can fill that stuff in later, possibly. But okay, so now we have the backdrop and we have all of our elements. So what we do now is we go to add a hue saturation. There's a couple ways to do it actually, but we're gonna click Alt and click on this so it's only affecting this layer right here. And we're gonna see, we change the skin to green. Let's change the skin to green. All right, there we go, the skin's green. Now we're gonna add another one right here and we're going to change the background to be, wait, what color was the background again? Background's blue. Okay, so we're gonna change this to be blue. Uh, it's kind of crushing things, making things a little bit weird. So there's another way to do it and I'm gonna try this here. We're just gonna add a blank layer and we're just gonna add a blue kind of cast to it. So just do that and then choose your blending to like, you know, just pick the blending that's gonna look the nicest. Uh, something like screen, screen will work. That'll do. Um, it's a little bit bright, so we're gonna add a brightness contrast as well. Turn the brightness down. Oh, sorry, we gotta turn the brightness down a little bit. It'll turn the contrast up. Let me turn it to contrast. There we go. All right, we'll actually add a, um, a brightness contrast on the skin as well. Let's try to get that way. We have a little bit more control. We'll probably have to come back and forth and determine what looks best, but okay. And last but not least, let's get one for the clothes. We can put this above here. And I think we could, oh yeah. So for this one, we want a hue saturation. We actually want to desaturate it. Make sure you click Alt, and so it only affects, oh, here, let's drag that above clothes. There we go. So we wanna desaturate it, and that's because um, there's a lot of different colors here. 
So we're going to desaturate it, and then we're going to add a cast to it. This is, this is the way to get the cleanest kind of unification of all the different colors. So we're going to, there we go, drag that down like that. You can kind of see it's done that thing there, but we want to turn that to screen. All right, now, now obviously that's done kind of a crap job of the eyes, and that's a problem. So either we have to t dial back the opacity, which is usually what I do, and we'll have to come back in and kind of adjust the levels later. But okay, let's export this picture, drag it in, and voila, it's now done the thing. Of course, we can't really see that it's done the thing because we were already, we were just on black and white. So now we'll start dragging in some of our colors. We'll do red for the skin tones and uh, yellow. I've not really done much of this type of skin tone, so this is going to be a little bit fun to try. Oh, I need to delete my eSun filaments because forget eSun, guys. It's really just crap. Okay. I sold them for like a dollar. Get out of my studio. We'll add an azure blue to their clothes. See, now this is a problem that I have uh, that it's so blue. Now, what we can do, and often this is times what I will do, is I have a bone white, or sorry, a cotton white, and that will kill that blue from the eyeballs. But we actually don't want blue here. I think the problem is the eyes are too dark. So we need to actually lighten the eyes up. Because the eyes are like the same color, the same hue as this or something, so that, that's not good. So we'll click on the eyes here, and we'll click on a brightness contrast. Oops, let's drag that down to the eyes and make sure that's only affecting the eyes, and we'll just brighten these bad boys up. Okay, quite a lot. Let's turn on smoothing down. Do you want a little bit of smoothing? No, I don't think smoothing's doing a good job here. Moderate, uh, moderate looks. No, okay, we're good where we're at. Tolerances, you should, have, you should be able to set to zero, but what you want to make sure is that there's not any sort of, um, like, things slipping in between the cracks, which so far it seems to be pretty good. I was worried about the feet. Let's see if the feet's got that going on. No, oh, yeah, no, no, we're good. That's looking good, that's looking good, okay. So we did a pretty good job here. All right, let's get the clothes uh, wrangled up. We wanna darken up the clothes as well, just so that they're not so white, because we need these eyes to be white. Um, I'm gonna stick some blue back in, like a dark blue maybe. Yeah, and no, see, unfortunately, the, the second I go blue, it's going to affect the teeth. So I think we might need to darken the clothes up a bit to get the clothes separate from the eyeballs. We might not have given enough space to the backdrop. It looks to be that's possibly the case. I think, you know, and this is like where I give some advice for people taking pictures for hue forging. You really want to have a strong separation from your subject in the background because that can be difficult to enact. Now, I'm going to say, you know, you got the money. Let's go ahead and just put this at a three-point hue forge instead of a 2.24 because what I need now is just more blending space. That is going to throw everything off, which means I have to kind of do it again, but it's okay because if you just kind of take it one step at a time, you'll not have to redo like everything, right? So just kind of drag everything back up into place. And this is where I hope, I wish that there was kind of a, uh, I wish that there was like a version of Hue Forge that let you kind of do this systematically, but currently there is not, so. Cotton white really helps get the blue out of the teeth. Now we could choose other colors and stuff. We could even just do like more of a black which might kind of help, but that, that's gonna give them like a black thing and that's maybe not what they want. Like, I don't know if there's cultural importance to that or not, so I don't really wanna screw that up. Uh, the clothes could be a little darker now, but let's go ahead and just mess with the backdrop, try to get it where we want it to go. Yeah, that's looking a lot nicer now. We got more room, you know, it's not so, Kind of like that green, actually. If I had more greens, I think I could make this look a little nicer. Like the green is actually pretty important and I'm just not big on greens, so 
that's why I just never really bothered too much with it. Okay, I like that. Just need to dial these clothes back just a little bit. Where are the clothes at? Right here, brightness. And this is, now you kind of see why we organize everything because you'll, uh, you'll get just a little nicer. Oh wait, see, you know what though? We actually don't want to brighten up. We need to separate the, uh, the hat from the rest of the clothes. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. Um, I'm not very good at doing like Asian Middle Eastern skin tones, so give me a break. Now we can try like different reds and stuff. Like if I was really trying to get serious about this, I would be putting on different reds. Like maybe the Bamboo Basic Red. No. Yeah, it, but or the Polymax Red, sorry. But I really like the Bamboo Basic Red. I think it does a fantastic job. Yeah, it does really good with the skin tones. I could try the Bamboo, or sorry, the Polymax Yellow. Yeah, we might want to hear Maybe the Polymax Yellow would get me where I want to go. No, that's just going to darken things up a little too much. You can fret about this all day, and skin tones are that way, you know? <laughs> um, if you're doing, like, beauty skin tones with women, it's a lot easier because, you know, there's a lot of like fantasy element to it, like whether they're really white skinned or really tanned, like, you know, when it comes to kids though, you really want to be as accurate as possible. Just cause you know, this is for someone to see their children and they don't really want to uh, see things differently. This is a bit more Caucasian looking, more reddish. This is maybe a bit too, you know, a bit too yellow, but that's the tough part, you know, is, is finding those, uh, those middle grounds with everything. Like this would look good if this was like my kids because they're a little bit more red, but he may not appreciate that given the fact that his kids aren't Caucasian. So yeah, so I'm, I, at the end of the day, I'm gonna say this right now to the guy who um, asked me to do this video. This is gonna be where you spend your most time probably, maybe even printing, reprinting, things like that. Um, it's just really trying to find the perfect skin tones. And at the end of the day, even though the TD1 is really good, it's not perfect, right? So you may have to, slightly change things. One layer is all the difference when it comes to skin tones, I'm telling you, even at 0, 0.0 layer height. Oh, that's one more thing too. Let's go ahead and set this correctly. This is not going to be one. Um, there we go. Now you see that's really degraded my quality, but that's because this is a very small print. So we're going to go to like 250, make it a big print. There we go. We got our detail back. And that is looking pretty good. All right. There is your picture. I'm sure there's some people who could do a little bit better, but that's my process. Uh, go ahead and screenshot all of the settings now, but I will save this project for him and send it to him. Why not? Well, guys, that is my workflow for doing more complicated color wear hue forges. This was definitely the hardest one I've ever done. And the last bit of advice I can really tell you is just don't forget that if you want to have a really nice picture, you want to have strong separation between your subject and your backdrop. That's gonna help a lot, like having, I mean, I, you know, honestly, I could have added a vignette to darken it up, but the problem is, is you can't really add vignette when there's really bright backgrounds because it looks like absolute poop and it doesn't blend very well in Hue 4G either. Well guys, I hope this helped and I will catch you next time. Oh, hello there. It's at this point that many of you might be asking yourselves, did I just join a cult? It's a perfectly valid question. Just make sure to like and subscribe. I repeat, like and subscribe. Also click up here or over there. Just click somewhere on the screen. It doesn't actually matter where you click. That's the secret.